Hi everyone! So in this video today, I wanted to take a look at the variations of all the PV-19 I have. So I haven't been able to find a good resource for PV-19 comparisons, but the one resource I found very helpful was on Denise's channel in Liquid Color, and I'll put the screenshot here so you could see what I'm talking about, how it looks to be very useful. And she also spoke a lot about it. I'm putting it here because I'm not sure. I guess if you follow Denise, you probably have seen it already in the past, but if you're just searching for PV-19 comparisons, it might not come up. I'll put the link down below as well so you can go check out her video. She has some brands and colors that I don't have, and I have some brands and colors that she doesn't have, at least according to that video. So hopefully between her video and this video I'm going to do today, you'll be able to sort of see the variations and possibly be able to find the one that you want to buy. Now before we get started, if you're an artist already, I'm pretty sure you know this, but for those of you who are beginners and stumbled upon my video, PV-19 is a pigment that does vary quite a bit, and this is the range that we're going to be going through today. Unlike Thalo Blue, where we have, you know, Thalo Blue colon 1, 3, 4, 6, with PV-19, I don't believe there's a colon and a number behind it, but instead we have PV-19 Gamma or Beta. And what we can see offered by watercolor paint manufacturers are usually quinacridone reds, quinacridone roses, and quinacridone violets made with this PV-19 pigment. Most of the time they don't denote whether it's gamma or beta, but quinacridone reds and quinacridone roses are both gamma, as I understand it, and quinacridone violets, which are more cool, leans more blue, is made with PV-19 beta. So just keep that in mind as we swatch through today. So some of these are gonna be from tubes. Uh, a few of them are gonna be from tubes and most of them are gonna be from pans or, or dried dot cards. I, I do have these in pans, but you know, I'd rather use up the dot cards so then I can use the ones in pans for painting and whatnot. Okay, let's get started. I have a total of 10 colors to show you today. We have Daniel Smith Quinacridone Red, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose, Shinhan PWC Quinacridone Red, Shinhan PWC Permanent Rose, Windsor & Newton Permanent Rose, White Knights Quin Red, Rembrandt Quin Rose Reddish, Rembrandt Quin Rose, Van Gogh Quin Rose, and Van Gogh Permanent Red Violet. All right, let me just zoom in. Okay, the first one we have is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Red. Daniel Smith colors are very pigmented and easy to re-wet, so I never have a problem with it. They're basically, they perform well and quite solidly. Um, there's no surprises and you could really count on them to perform well, to be what you want. Nothing surprising. Let's see if I could pack on some more pigment, if it could get to a dark, almost black. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll see once it dries down. Okay, next up is Quinn Rose. The first quinacridone rose color or PV19 color that I came across or that I used was Rembrandt's version, Quin Rose. And for the longest time, I, I didn't know that, I wasn't really into pigments back then, so I didn't know that it was like made with PV19 that everyone was raving about. And then, But I knew that it was a color that I really liked because at the time it was the only magenta or pink that I had in my palette. So right away we can see that the Quinn Red is warmer than the Quinn Rose. Both of them are very pigmented and vibrant. Next we have Shinhan WC, PWC Quinn Red. I just squeezed this out right now, just now, 
So it might be a little bit gloopy, but I'm going to try to make it into a nice even. Okay. I've already done a comparison video for the Shinhan and Daniel Smith. I'll link that below, but I'm going to see if today my results will be the same or if there'll be any different from my results last time. This one, even though it says it's a Quinn Red, it's looking a lot like Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose, much more so than Daniel Smith's Quinn Red. And for your information, the Shinhan PWC Quinn Red is actually quite a new color. In their range, they only had permanent rose for the longest time. And I believe it was only a few years ago that they added this Quinn Red. Shinhan Permanent Rose. This one is the tiniest bit warmer. Queen Red is definitely cooler, but not by much. I'd say Daniel Smith's Quinn Red compared to Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose is definitely warmer. It's clearly warmer than Quinn Rose. However, between Shinhan's Quinn Red and Permanent Rose, Permanent Rose is the warmer of the two, but the differences aren't as clear as Daniel Smith's pair. All right, next we have Windsor & Newton Permanent Rose. beautiful. The current one I've been using is this Windsor & Newton's Permanent Rose and it works just fine for me. Nothing, nothing bad to say about it, nothing special. It performs solidly, how about that? Let's see, how, how would I compare that? That's very vibrant, I really like that. I'd say it's it's quite similar to Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose and Shinhan Quinn Red. But then again, we'll still need to wait for these to all dry down and we'll see if there's any drying shift that may or may not affect the hue. All right, next we have White Knight's Quinn Red. I don't have this in a pan, so this will have to be from the tube. I've used um, this color in my palette for a really long time, a while ago, um, and I really like it because it leans much more red than, than your typical Quinn Rose that many people tend to use, like, you know, the, the more pink versions of Quinn Rose. And the reason I prefer my Quinn Roses or my PV19s to be on the redder end, the warmer end of the spectrum, because I like having Quinacridone Magenta PR122 in my palette. So I don't really have the need for the more violety versions of PV19. Okay, and then we have Quinacridone Rose Reddish by Rembrandt. Again, this is also another one of the colors that have recently been added to Rembrandt's range of watercolor. And by recently, I mean a few years or, or maybe more than a few years, but I'd say it's still quite new. 
because for the longest time they had Quin Rose and that was basically the only magenta in their in their range. So when I saw that they had Quin Rose reddish, I was really excited to see how I was really excited to see whether or not I'd like the more red version. And so far, so good. It's very bright. It does seem to be still rather pink. I mean, you could clearly tell that between the White Knight's Quinn Red and Rembrandt's Quinn Rose, that this one is warmer than this one. And I, since they already have a Quinn Rose, for Rembrandt. They already have a Quinn Rose. I expected the Quinn Rose Reddish to have a larger difference in hue at least. So we'll see that right now. Look at that. It's quite pink. And even though Rembrandt's Quinn Rose is rather pink and there is a clear difference between the two, I did want it to be much more red, much more warm. I mean, Quinn Rose Reddish. Because at the time, I felt like this Rembrandt Quinn Rose wasn't too different from my PR122. And that's because this is on the more violety end, not PV19 beta but it's almost there. I'm trying to pack on more pigment here for you to see whether it'll get darker or not. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. Oh, it's my paper again. I'm, after this, I'm gonna stop using this sketchbook, okay? I promise. All right, and then we have then go Quinn Rose. Okay, so the reason I got Van Gogh Quinn Rose is because at the time I had several Van Gogh and several Rembrandt's colors. And as I was comparing the two ranges, student and artist grade, I didn't see much of a difference. So I thought that if the Van Gogh version worked just as fine, then I could just buy the Van Gogh version. And that is exactly what I figured out and discovered that it's just fine. For me at least, I, I don't see much of a difference. I mean, Van Gogh's version is slightly more, um, I'd say slightly more opaque but it really isn't that opaque, like how some Lucas paints might be. Like, it's not chalky at all. It's just not as completely transparent as Rembrandt's version, but it's, it's exactly the same hue. I will say though that both Rembrandt and Van Gogh, from the pan, it can be quite low tinting. I'm not saying that it's low tinting, like just general low tinting colors like cobalt to violet, but compared to brands like Daniel Smith and Shinhan WC, from a dried pan, Rembrandt and Van Gogh seem to be harder to re-wet. I mean, it's not hard to re-wet at all, it's just lower tinting compared to the other brands that I've swatched above. So if you do like these Quinn Roses, and every time you use it, you feel like you have to have a light hand, a light touch in order to grab a specific amount of paint that you need to use. You, you always have to be careful how much because you don't like, you like the hue, but you don't like that it's intense. Maybe you can try out Rembrandt or Quinn Rose because I tend to find that these are, I'd say medium tinting, not low tinting or high tinting, but for a quinacridone color that is supposed to be intense, like phthalo blues and whatnot, these two tend to be on the weaker end of the spectrum.
Lastly, we have Van Gogh Permanent Red Violet. I believe I've swatched this in a comparison video before with the PR122. If not, that video should be coming up soon. Now the Van Gogh version is not exactly as dark or as blue-violet as it's meant to be. And I assume that's because Van Gogh's range, they tend to put brighteners in their formula. And so that's why it looks more towards a PR-122 instead of a darker PV-19, proper PV-19 quinacridone violet. Okay, and then I'm gonna zoom out for you to see these colors together before they dry. And then I'll come back once they all dry completely. All right, I'm back. The swatches have completely dried. The differences in hue is coming out very clearly. So I would like to note first of all that PV19 does not granulate and if you see any of these like specks, I think that's just my paper deteriorating. But other than that, it is a fully transparent pigment. For the most part, they're all transparent and high tinting. As I mentioned earlier, Rembrandt and Van Gogh, as I mentioned earlier, Rembrandt and Van Gogh, Quinn Rose, seem to be not as high tinting as brands like Daniel Smith and Shinhan PWC. Since there is a very clear difference in color temperature, I'm going to go from warmest to coolest, and that's most red to the most blue. So the warmest, I would have to say, is White Knight's Quinn Red, Daniel Smith Quinn Red. They seem quite similar. And then I'll have to say Rembrandt Quinn Rose Reddish and Shinhan Perm Rose. Those seem to be less warm than this pair. And then I'd have to say Windsor & Newton Permanent Rose. And as we start to get cooler, we have Shinhan PWC Quinn Red and then Daniel Smith Quinn Rose. Daniel Smith Quinn Rose is definitely more pink out of the the red bunch. And then I'd have to say Rembrandt Quinn Rose is cooler than Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose. These two would have to be on the more Quinn Rosey end, where these are more in the red end of the spectrum. And of course, Van Gogh Quinn Rose, similar to Rembrandt Quinn Rose. And lastly, we have the PV19 Beta, which is quinacridone violet, the Van Gogh Permanent Red Violet. The main thing I want to point out in this video is that Many people online seem to really advocate for Daniel Smith, especially Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose seem to be very popular. But I just want to mention that I've been using Shinhan PWC and these are like absolutely brilliant. They're very high tinting, they're very easy to re-wet. Of course, I don't know where most of you buy your products, but I'll put the price differences of Daniel Smith and Shinhan WC up on screen here so you could see the price differences. And hopefully if you've been looking at Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Red or Quinn Rose, there's another option for you to buy. I can see that Shinhan Quinacridone Red isn't as pink or as blue leaning as Daniel Smith's Quinn Rose, but I think it's it's almost there. And if you've used PV19 before, but you feel like, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't get as violety as you like, as pink as you like, then I do recommend Rembrandt's version of Quinn Rose because it's very, very blue leaning. I would definitely call this more of a magenta than a cool red. And for those of you who have been using quinacridone rose on the more violety side of the spectrum and you feel like you know you you want that super red warm pv19 i do recommend white knight's quin red on its own it does wash down to a pink and it does mix beautiful violets but you do get that warmth in this color as well as always i'll put the scan of this right after this and on the image after that, I'll put these in the order from warmest to coolest, from my observations at least. And hopefully that may or may not help you in deciding what to purchase for your next PV-19 or your very first PV-19, who knows. 
And again, don't forget to watch Denise's video. I'll put her link down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.